Hey guys, in this episode of John's Arcade, we're gonna play games. That's right, we're gonna hang out in the basement and play some games, including a new Neo Geo game that a viewer sent me. And then we're gonna come back to the table and do viewer mail. And also, I wanna remind you guys, if you wanna order a t-shirt, that's right, a John's Arcade t-shirt, you gotta do it now, because in two weeks, the campaign is over and you can't order them anymore. So if you want a shirt, go to teespring.com, T-E-E, -E, spring.com slash John's Arcade. That's teespring.com slash John's Arcade and order your John's Arcade shirt now. All right, guys, let's get on with the show. Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a, well, uh, John hangs out in the basement and plays games video. That's right, guys. In this video, we are gonna play games. We're gonna play a bunch of games because quite frankly, I'm in the mood to play games because you know, in the last video, if you guys remember, we fixed the 720 and, and, and honestly, it, it makes me feel pretty good, I have to say, because every game down here is currently working now that that's fixed. And you know what? I just wanna hang out down here today and I wanna play games. I wanna play games with you guys. I thought it'd be a lot of fun. So we're gonna go through the basement, we're gonna play a handful of select games, we'll talk about them, we'll play them together. I think it's gonna be a great time. And we're gonna start it off with a game that was sent by one of you guys. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna play a new Neo Geo game. Now this game was sent to me by a viewer, and uh, here it is right here. It's called Robo Army, and he sent me the full kit, okay, the full Neo Geo kit, and I'll show you guys it in a second here. But I wanna read you the letter that came with it because it's super cool. I mean, thank you very much for sending this awesome. And it's gonna be fun. We're gonna play, I've actually never played Robo Army. I don't know anything about it. So here's the letter. And by the way, I open it up and it says, hey, it says, hey John, we're in the basement over. Okay, so let's read it. And this is from Justin Van Allen. So Justin, thank you for the game. So hey John, like you, I really dig the Neo Geo. I have a four slot. Now, after converting it from a two slot, I've done a couple of vids where you can see it. Check out my channel. By the way, his YouTube channel is Retro Reviews Plus. Retro Reviews Plus. Anyway, he goes on. Uh, if you want to, I try to focus on games other than fighters for the Neo Geo. I'm the same way. I love like Bust a Move and Nightmare in the Dark and Metal Slug. Those are the kind of games I like. I do like uh, King of Fighters 98. That's a good fighter, but really overall, I, I look for the shmups and the beat em ups and all that stuff and the, and the Metal Slug type games. But he is looking for two fighters, Samurai Showdown and Art of Fighting 2. These two stand out to him. Anyways, I'm sending you a game that is kind of different. It's called Robo Army. So I hope you gladly accept this game. I, I just thought it's a different means of support. Yes, thank you, bro. I, I just want you to know all the work you do is appreciated. You rock, dude. Justin Van Allen. Again, P.S. My YouTube channel, Retro Reviews Plus. All right, Justin. Dude, thank you for sending this. This freaking rock. So he sent me a complete kit here. This is Robo Army for the Neo Geo, and it's got the original box, which is awesome. I mean, if you're going to collect Neo Geo games, this is how you want to get them, really. And so in here is, well, the cartridge, of course, and uh, Robo Army. So we'll put that in the Neo Geo in a second. And then it comes with this little thing here. I've never seen this before. Um, it says, remove this cover when installing the game cartridge. I have never seen this before. And I was trying to figure out, like, does this go in, in the fourth slot? Maybe you guys can tell me. I don't know where this goes. Remove this cover when installing game cartridge. I'm curious if this was originally on the PCB in the game and it was like a dust cover. Because I was trying to see if it went on here somewhere and it doesn't seem to go anywhere. Kind of interesting. Um, it did come with the original marquee. Now this one is really faded, okay? And this happens with, the, with these original marquees. They do fade, okay? But we'll put it in anyway. It's, it's still, you can still read it and stuff, so it'll be cool. And then it came with the dip switch settings, which is always part of the kit, you know. Um, it sh basically it shows all the soft dip settings that you can do in the game. So, all right, so what we're gonna do now, and by the way, again, uh, I, I wanna thank you for sending this, uh, Justin. Yes, Justin. <laughs> totally awesome, man. Thank you, bro. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna put this in the game right now. We're gonna play this, and then we'll go around and play some other games. What games do you guys wanna play, by the way? I, I was thinking, like, which ones we should play today. Because in the last, uh, I I I've done one of these videos before where we, where we go around the arcade and play games, and I'm, I, I wanna make sure we don't play the same games that we played last time. Um, 
but I don't think that'll be a problem. So, all right, so let's put this game in. It's called Robo Army, and I have never played Robo Army before, so I'm gonna turn the system off, and uh, this is kind of exciting, I have to say, because uh, this is a game that was not on my radar. I never would have picked it up, and so thank you, Justin. All right, so which game should I remove? Well, let's, let's, uh, let's pull out Ironclad which is the first slot here. And again, this is a Neo Geo 4 slot. And the Neo Geo games are essentially nothing more than cartridges. And when you put them in, you want the arrow to be facing you. So let's put it in here like so. Okay, so we've got the Robo Army cartridge in. And then really quick, let's change the mini marquee to match the game because we do have it. And so let me grab my keys here. So yeah, I was gonna do the uh, the Gottlieb power supply rebuild today and uh, you know Sunday just got away from me I, I don't know and honestly I wasn't really in the mood to do it I I'm kind of in the mood for just hanging out and playing games so I, I think this will be fun hopefully you guys enjoy this video okay so we got the Robo Army mini marquee in there so let's uh, go ahead and lock this up and uh, it's just it's just like two locks up here that hold this uh, this kind of metal cover that covers all the mini marquees. So let's lock this back up. All right, so let's turn the system on. And let's check out some Robo Army. I did Google it real quick. It's like a, I think it's a beat em up, like a side scrolling beat em up. All right, so the system is booting. Winners don't use drugs. All right, so here we go. Unknown robots. The US forces. Alright, this looks cool already. <laughs> I'm digging it. Alright, let's let's start a game. Robo Army. Memory card load? No, I don't have a, a game saved in here. Okay, so A. Looks like we're using the first three buttons. It says seize humanoids. We will use their human brains to clone ourselves. Wow. Area 1, Jungle. Mechanical Forest Zone. Wow, this looks pretty cool. Let me turn up the volume a little bit. Hang on, I'm gonna turn the volume up. Is that too loud? All right, here we go. All right, so A is punch. Oh, this is kinda cool. All right, I'm digging this already. So B is jump. C is, whoa, what the hell is that? <laughs> I can pick up cars? Oh, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like a double dragon type game, but the graphics are pretty great. It might, looks like my guy is like mechanical. He's got like robo arms. What's that? I just picked up an arm. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. I can pick up an arm and beat people with it. Pick up this barrel. Hey, I gotta say, this is kind of cool. Wow, Justin, thanks, bro. This this is actually a neat game. It looks like you could do two player uh, simultaneous too. All right, dogs. Can I crouch? How do I kill them? Yeah, wait till they jump. Let's pick up this car. There you go. All right, we got a pipe. Wait, how do I kill the dogs? How do I crouch? Uh oh, they just made a big dog. Crap. I just used my superpower, which is the C button. It seems like the D button doesn't do anything. Alright, we got birds. So everything's robotic in this game, huh? How you kill the dogs? I guess get away from the jump. Uh oh, tank. Use my superpower. Take that. All right, we killed the tank. Is that like our first boss or something? Whoa! 
Whoa, what is happening? I, I'm a car now? <laughs> All right, this game's wild, man. All right, what can I do with the car? I can jump. Can the car fire? All right, that was pretty wild. Help me. All right, we're rescuing some girls. All right, there's gorillas. Uh-oh, they're making a bigger gorilla, of course. Oh. Oh, I died. Yeah, we're continuing. We gotta, we gotta beat the first boss at least. There you go. What do you guys think of this so far? This is actually pretty cool, I, I have to say. I'm kind of digging it. They've provoked the wrath of Jeed. Graphics are pretty tight too. My army, destroy forces against us. All right, why don't we, why don't we take a little, a, a little peek at the second level? I, I don't think we're gonna play through the game. If you guys want me to, I'll do a, a complete playthrough later. All right, now I'm the car again. So what does the car do exactly? You can jump on people? Is that what it is? So, oh, C. All right, so C is like a charge. Oh, man. I'm gonna try my superpower. There you go. Take that. Birds. Let me pick up this Camaro. What kind of car is that? Like a Firebird? <laughs> Let's throw the Firebird to someone. There you go. All right, chopper's coming. Whoops. Okay, that's a landmine. Don't step on that. Uh-oh. Is this near a boss? Great. We got guys jumping out of the truck. Why are they jumping all around? All right, here, take that. You can knock off the top half of their body. And they just become like walking legs. All right, we gotta at least pass this. Is this a boss battle, you think? Woot! All right, there's, those are landmines. Avoid them. Jeez, it's getting hard. This is probably fun to play with two players because it looks like you can play two players simultaneous. It's probably a good time. Barrel took care of them.
more Firebirds. Not sure what the power-ups do. I'm guessing it maybe affects your uh, A and B as a back kick. All right, there's a combo. Oh, cool. Oh my god, what is this thing? So if you do A and B, you do a back kick? <laughs> thing eats you up. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh man, this is tough. All right, let's try our, our power. Hit him again. There we got him. So yeah, man, that's Robo Army. So we beat the first the first two bosses. Uh, hey, that's not a bad game. That's kind of fun. So uh, listen, uh, Justin, dude, thank you for sending me this cartridge, man. I love it. That's a cool. I, I never heard of this game. And this is a game I would have never even looked at if I saw on eBay. So Justin, dude, thank you so much for sending me that card. Do you guys like it? This is kind of cool. So we're going on a rope. So I, I don't want to do a complete walkthrough in this game, uh, in this video. I want to play a few games, but uh, so yeah, that was Robo Army. Let me uh, reset my Neo Geo. Hopefully I didn't have the uh, volume up too much. Um, and by the way, the, uh, the mini marquee you sent me, Justin, actually looks pretty good. Um, it's faded, but it illuminates just fine. Colors are a little washed out. Not bad. All right, so, all right, what, what do you guys want to play now? What should we try? I, I was kind of in the mood to play some Asteroids Deluxe. What do you guys think of that? I kind of want to play Mario Brothers, too. Maybe a little pole position action. Uh, yeah, let's let's try some Asteroids Deluxe. I haven't uh, played that in a while, I have to admit. And, uh, you know, Asteroids Deluxe really is cool. It's it's one of the, the best-looking games down here um, because of the blacklight effects. And let me turn the light off so you guys can actually see them. But, yeah, there's there's a blacklight in there. I should actually turn this fluorescent off back here so we have no glare. So let's play a little Asteroids Deluxe. And, you know, Asteroids Deluxe... Well, first of all, Asteroids was a game... When I was a kid, that was that was a pretty big deal. You know, when Asteroids came out, it, it was just so elite, you know, and I played a lot of it when I was when I was younger, but I played the original Asteroids. I really don't remember Asteroids Deluxe so much. Um, but when I started collecting, I started just, you know, seeing Asteroids Deluxe games in people's collections, and I'm like, wow, this is way cooler than Asteroids. And, you know, it, it's basically Asteroids with this little added thing, which is this de Death Star, like, chases you. But, but really, it's, it's Asteroids. It's, it's just a more deluxe version, hence the name. So the controls are, you know, your basic Asteroids controls. You have rotate left, rotate right. We have a shield button. Uh, in the original Asteroids, it didn't have this. I think it had a hyperspace, right? You press that, and then your your ship like disappeared and reappeared somewhere else. This game has shields, and the shields are actually timed. Um, it's not like on a level you have like you know you can only use this like three times. Basically, you have a, a set amount of time. Like I don't know what it is. Like let's just say like two seconds. So if I hold this down for two seconds, I can't use it again for the rest of the level. But if I just hit it like once real quick. That that find that little minute amount of time counts towards my total shield time for the level. And then we have a thrust and a fire. Um, I really like these kind of games where you control with the buttons, like the left, right, instead of a joystick. It's actually a, a very different way of thinking about gaming. I mean, because we've really gotten away from that. Um, we would never release a game now where you're 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 steering left, right with buttons. That's that's a very old way of thinking, really. And Space Invaders was the same way. It had left and right with the buttons. However, the Japanese version, they used a joystick. But uh, with Asteroids, it feels right. I think they would, if they would have put a joystick on here, I don't think I would have liked it as much. So, all right, let's start a game. I have it on free play. Let me see if I got the whole play field in the shot here. And with Asteroids, if you've never played it, you know, we're basically trying to get rid of all the Asteroids. And the Asteroids start out large, and when we shoot them, they get small. And it's, it, there's like three different size asteroids. There's large, medium, and small. And so when you sh shoot a large, it turns into two mediums. Right? Is that what it? 
And that, yeah, that's not what happens, right? Yeah, when you shoot a large, it turns into two mediums, and then and then a medium turns into two smalls. And then the smalls go away. And I typically... I typically uh, use my thrust button quite a bit in this game. When I was a kid, I'm using the, the shield there, because that UFO comes out, and he's shooting at me. Alright, so that right there, this thing that just came out is called the Death Star. And this is what's different about this game. It's that thing, okay? And when I shoot it, it's going to break into a bunch of small pieces and it's going to chase me. It's going to pursue me. Which, the original asteroids had nothing like that. See how, see how all the pieces are following me? And so you basically want to run away from it, turn around, and then fire at it. So we just passed the first level. I know this game's kind of simplistic. I mean, compared to that game we just played, that Neo Geo game, this is pretty basic, isn't it? But it's such a classic. I mean, you cannot deny it. I mean, this, this game is pretty damn important. And it's good. It's still good. It still plays really well. Honestly, it does. Um, it's fun to play this game. I have to admit, I haven't played it in a while, but I have played a lot of this game down here. I mean, when you're playing for high score on this, you really get into it. So those are the larger UFOs. Later in the game, we're going to get smaller UFOs, which are a lot harder to hit. All right, so the Death Star came out. So I've got the UFO and the Death Star to deal with right now. Oh, God. <laughs> it was a crappy game. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm not even going to bother with my initials. These games only save the top three initials, and... Uh, it's weird, Atari has like a leaderboard that holds 10 scores, but the, the, the battery-backed RAM only saves the top three. And they did that so like every day someone had an opportunity to get a high score on there, instead of having one guy have the top 10. But uh, yeah, that's Asteroids Deluxe. I, I do like that game. Um, what do you want to play? I, I really, actually, I want to play Mario Brothers. I do, I'm in the mood to play that. And uh, Mario Brothers is one of the first games I got. And uh, this is a great 1983 classic. You know, what can you say about Mario Brothers? Um, I used to play the hell out of this game on my Atari 800 XL. On my computer, the, the, the Atari computer version of this was actually really good. But not as good as the arcade. So let's play this. Um, you could play this game one or two players. Um, two players is a lot of fun because you can play cooperatively or competitively against each other. But we're, it's only me, so we're going to play a one-player game. And you guys got to remember, you know, this game right here is kind of where everything started for Mario. I mean, yeah, Donkey Kong was technically Mario's first game. But this game right here is where they really figured out the whole Super Mario Brothers thing. You know, this is kind of the start of it. And you see the turtles in here and the pipes and the bricks and all that stuff. But the, the mechanic, though, is different. Because in, in Super Mario Brothers, you jumped on the turtles' backs, right, to get their shell off. In this game, you have to hit them from underneath to knock them on their back like this. And then you kick them off, which is a very different mechanic than Super Mario Brothers. So if you're accustomed to playing Super Mario Brothers, this game's going to feel a little weird and foreign. But... Just keep in mind that, you know, this was an early version of Mario, and they kind of refined it in, in in Super Mario Brothers. And by the way, after every turtle that you kill, a coin will come out. So right now, I, I have... I think I have two coins coming. Yeah, there. So let's get this guy. And then the last turtle always turns red. But I want to grab the coins. I want to do a little bit of point pressing here. And by the way, he's going to go in the right pipe on the bottom, and then he always comes out on the same pipe on the top. So if he goes in the bottom right, he go comes out on the top right. Okay, so this is a bonus level, and we got to get all the coins. And this is basically how I do this level. I rarely don't get all the coins within the time limit. It's kind of... Once you get this little pattern down, it's kind of hard not to get them all. So there we go. we got a nice... Uh, well, we get 800 points of coin and then like a 5,000 point bonus. All right, so now the second level, or, the, or the, this next set of levels introduces the little crab guys. And these guys are different because they require two hits. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that one once. And I try to group them. Because you get more points if you kick off more than one enemy at a t in a row. 
kind of not doing so great, to be honest. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get this dude. All right, I'm going to come down here. And by the way, you can't really linger in one spot because the fireballs will come get you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's mad. So he's going to come out of the top here. Let's get him. All right. Okay, so we cleared that level. All right, so same deal. Let's get up here. I usually try to get, like, this guy once, like that, and then get that guy like that, and then I use my pow block here, get both of them, and then kick, kick. And I know there's guys that have, like, serious strategy for this game. I, I never got that good. Because you can group them in the center here and really mop up. Because you get a lot of points if you kick off multiple enemies in a row. And it is possible to kill the fireball like that, but you're going to make the fireball a little more aggressive now. It's kind of mad. All right, let's get two of these grouped up. So if I if I were to hit the, uh, the, the crabs from the bottom again, it would turn them back upright and they could kill me. So let's get this last... Oh, shit! <laughs> so when the fireball gets you, Mario, like, ignites into flames. Pretty funny. Alright, so I'm gonna jump down. Let's get the last turtle and get out of here. Okay. So we cleared that level. My highest score in this game, I think, I want to say it's around 120. Okay, so now we're introducing the fighter flies. These guys are kind of a bear to, to kill because you gotta hit them at the right time because they're jumping. See how they jump? So you have to hit them when they're on the platform. So you can see there, I got, I got a little bonus. I got 800 for the first one and then 1600 for the second. Oh, darn it! I'm actually not bad at this game. I can hang. Matt McCarthy and I, for a while, we, we, we thought we were going to go for the world record on this. Because they have a separate leaderboard for... Um, two-player teams, and uh, basically, when the last guy, the first guy that loses all their lives, the game is over, and whatever the score is, is the one that gets recorded. So the second guy can't continue the play. So you can see, if I'm lingering too much in one area, the fireballs come out, the green ones. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that. Oh my god! I'm really not this bad at this game. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy once and for all. I really love like the sounds and the colors and, and just how this the whole the way this whole game feels is just it's perfect. But like I said, you know, if you're coming from Super Mario to this, this game feels weird, man. That like Mario's slippery, the controls are kind of slippery, not nearly as tight as Super Mario Bros. So anyway, yeah, we didn't have too good a game. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to linger too much. Let, let's move on. So, what should we play now? Uh, I'll play a little Zookeeper. I haven't played that in a while, actually. Did we play Zookeeper in the last video? I don't think we did. Alright, let's play a little Zookeeper. You know, this is one of those games that I just never got good at, and I don't know why. Because I actually really, really like this game. Like, tons. And, you know, this is a pretty rare game. This is a Taito game. And I, I think it's Taito's best game that they released in, in the 80s. And uh, it, it's pretty damn good. So the controls are just a four-way joystick and a jump button. And on the surface of the game, it looks like you want to keep the animals inside the brick area. But actually, you don't. You want to get them all out and do big jumps. I'm starting to feel like I did this in the last video. Did I? I don't remember. So the game does start out a little slow, but it does ramp up. So right now, I don't really care what happens, because there's really not a lot of points to be had. So I'm just going to get them all inside, and then get the last bonus, and then let the level end. So the first few levels are just kind of, eh. The game ramps up, like, about, you know, four or five levels in. And the beginning is just, it's a little bit of a, uh, a grind. A little boring. But they probably did that to kind of suck in the players. Make them feel like they're accomplishing something. And then, you know, it takes their quarter and then you want to play it again. Because you feel like you did something on the early levels. But, man, the game seriously ramps up after, like, you know, five, six levels. Alright, so this is the little bonus level. Which I happen to think is actually pretty brilliant. 
And we just gotta rescue the girl. And we got 5,000 points. Alright, so it's gonna get a little harder now. And one thing to keep in mind is that the animals always spawn out of the the brick area, the opposite direction where Zeke is. Yeah, the character's name is Zeke. And uh, so if I stand here, they're all gonna go go left, which is what I want them to do. Because I'm basically, what I want to do in this game is, is get a big jump, okay? I want to jump as many animals as I can, because when you land, you get a nice chunk of points. And the more animals you jump, the more points you get. And if you get them all going in the same direction, your odds kind of increase of getting a big jump. And by the way, this is a game that plays really well in MAME. So if you guys want to check out this game, I say do it. So you can see, if I jump over three animals, I get 2,000 points. Here's a nice grouping right there. I got 6,000 for that group. And sometimes you can do like some crazy landings, like right like that. <laughs> you just gotta like wail on the jump button and you'll land like just in that little spot. Okay, so here's the next bonus level. I usually don't linger on this level, I just kind of get to the top as fast as I can. However, these prizes are worth kind of some cash. Oh shit, don't let the coconut hit me. And if the coconut hit you, you yeah, you'll die, like instantly. Alright, I gotta actually pay attention now. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, like I said, it, it doesn't really pay to linger on this game. Uh, unless you're a world record guy and you need to seriously point press. But I usually try to get up here as fast as I can. There we go. Okay, so now the second time there's a, an additional bonus level, which is this little, this little escalator level. And again, it's not too wise to linger. And you can die on that level too. Just get over it. All right. Oh my God! Get up there. All right. So we saved the girl. Oh. <sighs> And we got a bonus life for doing that. Okay, so now is when the game gets good. So right away, I want to get the net so I can kind of do crowd control here. So I want to send them all back in so that they come out in the direction I want them to. So I want them to kind of make a hole here. Come on. Where are you guys going to come out? I screwed it up. Yeah, it's going to be total chaos here in a second. So right now, I just need to survive and, and find a good grouping of animals to jump over, which is coming up right here. See that? Look at that. Oh, 30,000 points for that jump. So there's guys that are so good at this game that they can jump over huge packs of animals and get like a million points. And that's really where you elevate your game, and that's where you get these world record scores, is you get these massive groupings of animals and jump them. Alright, so now the lion. This is where it, this is where it gets real, guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, dumb. Alright, let me see if I can get them all to go in, reason, in reasonably the same direction. Come on. Come on, come out. Oh. Yeah, that was an okay game. 167,400. My game loses the high scores. It, it'll keep them for like weeks and then it just loses them. I have a rechargeable battery on here. But you can see I haven't played in a couple weeks and uh, so there you go, number one, 167, 400. I mean, Zookeeper's awesome. I mean, you cannot beat this game, honestly. It's one of those games that's never gonna leave my collection. You know, it's that good. All right, so what should we play now? I'm actually, I was thinking we should play some Gyrus. What do you, what do you guys think about that? Anything else you wanna play? Frogger, eh. Why don't we play some Gyrus? I, I think Gyrus is a game I haven't played in a while, and that was a game I put a lot of work into. Um, I mean, Gyrus is a really good game, but it's kind of back there in the corner, all lonely. <laughs> you guys want to go try it? All right, let's go back there. Make, make some room for the uh, tripod to come through. So Gyrus was a game that I restored, and uh, I put a lot of work into it, to be honest. And uh, it was a game that came out of a barn, of all places. And uh, it wasn't in the best of shape when I got it. 
and uh, it's pretty nice right now. So maybe see if I can get in here. Oh boy. It's kind of tight in there. <laughs> there we go. Can we do it? Alright, so I got the tripod in there, but I'm not in there. <laughs> Alright, hang on. Let me get this set up. Alright, we got it all set up here. So, this is Gyrus. Uh, the thing to know about this game is that the controller is actually pretty unique. It's like a full 360 degree joystick. Uh, this is called a Monroe stick. And really, this the big part of the feel of this game is this joystick right here. And then a single fire button. This game's kind of a cross between... Uh, like Tempest and Galaga, and it's got a really cool soundtrack. It's like a uh, classical music soundtrack all rocked up. And uh, so let's go ahead and start a game. So, so you want to try to get the whole grouping of, of ships. You want to kill them all while they come out, and there is a pattern here. It's, uh, oh my god. <laughs> all right. Well, whatever. I blew it. So we're starting over. Forget the pattern. There's no pattern right now. All right, so this thing here, if I kill the center thing, it'll give me a little power up. So now my ship is firing two bullets at a time. All right, so we passed the first level. So we're basically trying to get to Earth in this game. And right now it's one warp to Neptune. Come on! And the next room is gonna come over here. Uh, man, I'm stinking. And then the next room comes to the top. Alright, so I got, see, I, I got a thousand point bonus for getting them all as they come out of their little spawn area. And now we have these little satellite things. And if I didn't have the double shot, that would give me the double shot in the middle. All right, so you can see we're warping to Neptune. It really is a cool game. All right, so this is the bonus level. Very much like Galaga. So we need to kill all these things. And you get a bonus if you kill every single ship that comes out. So I don't want to let any escape. And the first time around, it's not that hard. So we got a perfect 10,000 points. to Uranus. So I, I try to kill as many ships as I can as they're spawning. Because it's less to deal with afterwards. And I don't know if that's a necessarily a good high score move. But by the way, Mike San Pedro, I hope you know him. He came to my house and put up a million points on this game. A million points. And he like literally just like stopped playing, just walked away. He could have kept playing forever. I don't know if he has a world record on it or what, but he could. All right, so we passed that level, stage five. Now it's two warps to Uranus. All right, we're doing good. Ah, oh, darn it. 51,900 for score. Now we have the single shot, which is lame, so I really want to upgrade as soon as I can. And uh, one warp to Uranus. So I, I, I got to make sure I have the double shot going into the bonus level. Unless I my game's over. <laughs> ah, yeah. John's not very good at these games, is he? <laughs> so, yeah, that's Gyrus. All right, what do you guys want to play? Why don't, why don't we play one more game? What should we try? I'll play Cubert. I haven't played Cubert in a while. I know it's sad for me to say that. You guys are like, oh, why do you mean you haven't played that in a while? Well, you know, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't played Cubert in a while. There's a lot of games down here. It's easy to kind of focus on stuff, you know, other stuff. So let, let's play some Cubert. So Cubert, I mean, do you guys do you guys need me to tell you anything about Cubert? I mean, Cubert is is one of those just absolute iconic and classic games, and I think everybody knows Cubert, you know, and. Uh, it's funny, I got a lot of people commenting on my videos, on my Cubert videos, after Wreck-It Ralph. 
it seems like a lot of young people discovered Qbert from Wreck-It Ralph, which is cool. So it's pretty awesome that a new Disney movie, you know, is kind of giving this game some heightened awareness. But uh, it really is a great game. And again, this is one of those games that kind of kind of has unique controls. It has a four-way joystick, but what's different about it is that it's diagonal. Okay, it's not up, down, left, right. It's up, left, down, left, down, right, you know, and up, left. I mean, and uh, up, right. And uh, so when you play this in MAME, you can. It, it's just a little disorienting because uh, you're, it, it, it's just that Cuber's not moving exactly the way you're pushing, you know, because on a four-way joystick, basically they just took a four-way joystick and they just rotated it, you know, like uh, 25 degrees or whatever that is, 180 degrees. No, that would be zero to, four, they rotated it 45 degrees. So, all right, let's play. All right, so if you've never played Cubert, the object of the game is to basically turn all of the bricks the color that it says to. See where it says change to? And, uh, and there's a little platform here. See that snake? His name's Coily. So if I jump on the platform when I'm near the snake, it gets rid of him. And I don't know if you guys heard that, but there's a little knocker on the bottom of the cabinet because Gottlieb was a pinball company, okay? And they had pinball parts laying around, didn't they? And so they decided it would be cool to put a knocker in the game. Listen, you hear the knocker? So when the characters hit the floor of the cabinet, a knocker fires off and it kind of is cool. It's like this cool like analog effect kind of makes the game seem real. You know, like, oh, like, like that snake just hit the bottom of the cabinet. Like, listen. I love it. It's just such a neat thing. And the knocker a lot of times doesn't work on these games and they're problematic. And uh, especially if you use the switching power supply because it's a lower voltage. Now I have the original power supply in mind so I get the full voltage to the, to the coil. Um, but if you use the switching power supply adapter, um, it kind of lowers the voltage to the coil and, it, and the knocker doesn't f fire as much. Okay, so now the next level here is introduces the, the wrong way guys who are jumping on uh, the other side of the cube. Alright, cool. And if I get that green ball, by the way, it will freeze everything. Oh. I was going to kind of point press there and get that get the, the snake with that thing. Alright, we just got a free life. I've been thinking about putting the faster, harder, more challenging ROMs in my Cuber game. I think I'm going to do it. I think it would kind of jazz this up. I used to have the multi Cuber kit in here and I pulled it out because I was having trouble with my Cuber and I was trying to rule out the multi kit and it, it wasn't the issue, but I, I sold the kit because I really never used it. I really just want to play Cuber. Cuber Cubes is okay, but really Cuber and Faster, Harder, More Challenging Cuber is, are really the best games. And I actually have a video up for Faster, Harder, More Challenging Cuber. And it's basically this game, except it's just way harder. And uh, they added some different elements. Okay, so now the game changes. Okay, so now we need to jump on the squares twice. Okay, because the first time we jump on the, on the squares, they turn this kind of tan color. And then the second time you jump on them, they turn green. So the game's starting to get a little more hard, adding a little variety to the sim simplistic gameplay. So that guy there was uh, Slicker Sam, and he'll turn the squares back to their original color. So you want to get rid of him as soon as you can. And if you get the green ball, it'll freeze the level. And I didn't get it, but that thing will help you. See, here comes that stupid guy, Slick. So he changed all those squares back. Alright, let's see if we can quickly get out of here. Bam, bam, bam. So what do you think? I mean, this game's awesome. I used to play this on my Atari 2600, and I'm sure it was absolutely horrible. There was like all these games that like Parker Brothers made on the 2600. So I, I remember having Cuber, and I think I had Frogger. And uh, they were somewhat decent ports, but Cuber was one of those Parker Brothers cartridges. I mean, at the time, it seemed amazing. And with the 2600, you could just rotate the joystick, you know, 45 degrees in your hand, you know, to get the correct diagonal angles going. 
You get out of here, dude. Alright, so I got, actually got rid of him. Alright, let's get out of here. Okay, so we cleared that level. Level two, round two. So now we gotta change him to yellow. I don't really have any strategy with this game. I just kind of survive. Just got a free life. So now if I grab this green ball, God darn it, get it! <laughs> the red balls will kill you, the green ones will not. Oh, red ball fell on me. No, dude, leave! Oh. Alright, I'm really doing stupid stuff now. Oh, yeah, 22,965. So, I don't have a high score save kit in mine, and I really should put an NV RAM in here. I had an NV RAM in here before, and it wasn't really, really working. I need to revisit it so it saves score, but uh, yeah, that was Qbert. So, all right, guys, I, I think. Do you want to play another game? Nah. I tell you what, why don't we do some viewer mail? Because I got a bunch of them to get through. But what did you guys think? Was that fun playing games down here? I like it. I gotta say, I'm pretty stoked with how the arcade is now. I, I, I love the selection of games I have. I really do. Like, every game down here means something to me. But the writing is going to be on the wall for a few of them because I've got Quantum to get down here. And I'm working on another game to get, get down here, too. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, yeah, let's stop here. Let, let's do our viewer mail. And because uh, I want to read these. You guys do like the viewer mail segment, right? <laughs> I mean, you guys certainly send me tons of them, and thank you, by the way. But let's uh, let's get set up here. Let's read some viewer mail. And uh, and by the way, I, I do want to thank you guys for supporting me on that T-shirt campaign, okay? Because if you guys aren't aware, I'm doing a Teespring t-shirt campaign at teespring.com t-e-e spring.com slash john's arcade t-e-e spring.com slash john's arcade and it's going to be for a limited time okay so if you guys want a t-shirt you got to go get it now and i set the goal it's, it's kind of like kickstarter for t-shirts you know and i set the goal for 59 shirts and within the first day we'd sold like like 75 so we, we've already hit our goal um I, I haven't looked today, but like yesterday we were at 130 t-shirts. So guys, thank you for supporting me. Honestly, thank you, thank you, thank you. I truly do have the best viewers. I mean that. You guys are all awesome. You're all very supportive. It's all very encouraging. So I want to thank you guys. I, I mean that. I truly mean that. You know, I mean, I mean, look, look how cool you guys are. You know, Justin, thank you. Thank you for this game. Thank you for everything. I, I'm not ungrateful. I want you guys to know that. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you for buying the shirts, but if you do want a shirt, you got you to get it because in like two weeks, that campaign is stopping, and then that's it. No more t-shirts. So if you want a t-shirt, you got to order one now. Go to teespring.com slash John's Arcade. All right, let's do some viewer mails. And by the way, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail segment, you got to email them. You're going to email them to blkdog7 at gmail.com, blkdog7 at gmail.com, and in the subject line, please put viewer mail. All right, so the next letter, or actually the first letter that I want to read, is another handwritten letter, okay? Now, if you guys remember, uh, a few videos ago, uh, Clay and Rhett sent me a handwritten letter wondering if they were my youngest viewer, okay? And these guys are eight years old, okay? <laughs> these guys are eight-year-old kids watching the John's Arcade videos. And so they wrote me last time wanting some help with the Donkey Kong joystick. And I told them to use some silicone spray to, to lube it up. So uh, they sent me an, a, a message back because I told them to. I wanted to know how it turned out. How did that lube work on the joystick? And it says, Dear John, remember me? I want to tell you that my favorite video is all of them. And by the way, I asked them in the last video, what, what, which video is their favorite? So they said all of them. We went and bought the oil. It worked perfectly. 
Now we can have better games. How about that? Where did you get or how did you make the high score stickers? Okay, you know what? I actually get a lot. You guys have been asking me a lot about this and uh, people want the artwork files for these. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna supply them. If you guys truly want this, I will. But on, on my games, on the games that don't save high scores, or even the ones that do, I put these little, they're little cards, right? And I basically just print them on my home printer, okay? And I cut them out, that's all I do. And it just says John's Arcade, high score, name and date. So I've had a few guys ask me for the artwork for these, so you guys can print these at home. So if you guys want these, I'll make the artwork available. I'll put a link in the notes in this video, and you guys could download a PDF and print these out on cardstock and, and put them on your game. So yes, I, I will make this artwork available and you guys can do that. But uh, I think it's fun to have these on the game, just, you know, because it's, it's actually kind of almost better than the high score save because it's, it's just like you can see it. Everyone can see it. It's like, oh, that's what I need to do. And then when someone does break the score down here, it's kind of like a ceremony. <laughs> it's like, it's like everything stops. Hang on, we got to make a new card. And it's just, it's more impactful. So I, I actually really think, I like this. I, 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 this. I'm glad I did this and I would do it again. So, uh, so Rhett, if you want the artwork, I'll make it available. Um, he wants to, uh, how did you get or did you make the high score stickers? Yes, I made them. I just printed them on cardstock in my printer at home here. Um, he says, we have 23 games. My favorite is Galaga. Rhett's is Big, Big Guns the Pinball. I used to have that game. Big Guns was okay, but you know what? It's a cool pin. I, I mean, it has really cool features. It shoots these, like, the balls out of these cannons. So it's a great game. And it, it's very tall, too. It has a bagatelle in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the head box, uh, the head, head box, the, the back glass in the head. Uh, we have three rare games. Missile Command Cockpit. Yeah, that is a very rare game, Clay. Uh, an environmental discs of Tron. Come on. <laughs> this kid's not living in an average basement arcade. <laughs> a Star Wars cockpit. When you come to Atlanta, you are invited uh, to our arcade. It is in, uh, we won't say where. He's about 30 miles from the expo. And yes, I'll be coming to the Southern Fried Game Room Expo. Uh, what is that, June 19th to the 21st, I think? And I'll be speaking there. I'll be one of the speakers in the panel discussions and all that. And uh, so they're having me down there. And uh, I'll, I'll be doing a walkthrough video too of that, of that whole place. So if you guys are going to the Southern Fried Game Room Expo, be sure to stop by and say hi. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll be on the schedule somehow. I don't, I don't know what the schedule is right now, but I'll be on the schedule. And they want me to, to sign stuff and, and, and speak and all that. So just if you're going to the show, make sure you find me if you're a fan of the channel, please. Um, and he says, P.S. We're making Rhett a cardboard pin, pin with balls. Pin, 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 I think it says a cardboard pinball with balls. Well, all right. Well, cool, man. Well, Rhett and Clay, uh, thank you again for writing me. And, and by the way, you guys have a great arcade, it sounds like. An environmental disc of Tron, that's a big deal. Missile Command Cockpit, that's a big deal. So, and I'm really glad the oil worked out. So, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys go to the Southern Fry Game Room Expo, uh, hopefully you and your dad can stop by. All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's see, which one should we do here? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this one. Hi, John. Greetings from Canada, eh? I know you are a dedicated classic guy, but I was wondering if you'd be interested in doing an arcade SD full review. I've read about them. They appear to be much better than the 16-in-1 and apparently save high scores. The only thing is, good full reviews on YouTube for this product is severely lacking. I would be interested in your trained, experienced eye giving a full-on look at the product. From hardware to software to gameplay and emulation to ease of use, it would be a good indoor winter spring project to pop one in a cab and try it out. What do you think possible? From Mike Crawley. Well, Mike, you know what? Uh, I used to have that board, okay? Cause I actually, I, I did some work for Phoenix Arcade. I did some of the artwork for him, uh, the multi-game artwork. And he paid me in store credit. And uh, that was one of the things that I took. Uh, I had the arcade SD board and I put it in my JAMA cabinet, uh, the Street Fighter. And it didn't suit 
my needs down here. So I got rid of it. I know, I know I've said this before, but I wanted, I wanted to address this because I do want to tell you though that it's a very good product, okay? It is emulation, but the emulation is decent. The menu is fantastic. I would say the easy use is high. The only negative about it is that it has this, uh, basically this phone home scheme, okay? So in order to get the games on the SD card, I'm trying to remember how it worked. You plug it in your computer and the, and, and the software needs to check in with the server before you can copy the data or make the device work or something like that. But you basically, you have to have a computer to make it work. You need to plug it into a Windows machine and run the proprietary software to activate it and put the games on. The, the, gate, the, the, S, the, the board itself does not come with any ROMs. Okay, so basically you need to go out on the internet and find the main ROMs, put them on an SD card, plug that whole thing into your computer and activate it. Now, the Arcade SD has a finite amount of games that it plays. There is a list of games that it supports because it's a proprietary flavor of MAME that Clay Cowgill developed. Uh, and the emulation in general is very good because because Clay is vetting the ROMs before he allows them to go on the board. So he makes sure the games play very well. Um, what's nice about the board is that it plays horizontal and vertical games. You can actually play some vertical games on a horizontal monitor and vice versa, which is nice. Um, the menu system's great. Uh, you know, like on Donkey Kong, I noticed some of the sounds were a little off. But in general, it's a very solid product. And if you're not willing or, or able to build a main cabinet, or you don't have the time, and you just want one game and that's it, or you have a JAMA cabinet already, you want to make your life easy, I highly recommend that product. I, I think the Arcade SD is a fantastic thing. It's expensive, though. It's like, I think it's almost $300. So it's it's not cheap by any means, but it's it's good. And I, I'm not positive about this, but they might have stopped updating it because they were adding updates to it here and there that were adding more games to it. And, and the game library was growing that it, that it supported. But in general, I do recommend that product. I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, if you don't want to spend the $300 and you just want to kind of dabble in this, if you've never owned anything, the 16 one is a great starting point and it's dirt cheap. It's like 50 bucks, okay? And you'll get most of the classics. The interface is kludgy. It's not great. The emulation is good enough. But for 50 bucks, it's a nice entry point into this hobby. You know, you, you get yourself a cheap JAMA cabinet, a vertical one. You throw that 16 one in there and bam, you got a multi game. You're playing Galaga and Pac Man like that. So um, the 16 one's not bad either. Uh, let's see, which one should we do? Uh, this one's just kind of silly. Uh, this one's from, uh, the, the subject line is, oh my god, I'm a drinker. I don't know if this is actually meant to be a viewer mail. <laughs> the subject line didn't say viewer mail on this one. Hey, John, I recently watched your episode featuring Galloping Ghost Arcade and heard you talking about the email you, re you received complaining about your alcohol use in the show. Here's a picture of me at the moment. Thanks, John. I don't know if you guys can see the picture, but it's him and his arcade with a beer. With a sad face. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I slowed down on drinking in general. You know, I got kids watching this. No, that's not the reason. But, you know, I, 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 I gained a little weight over the winter, and I wasn't happy about it. So, like, first of the year, I'm like, I got to cut it out. So, uh, I'm chilling out on that. So, it just doesn't agree with me. I, I go to the gym, and, and then I drink, and then it, it, it just undoes it. It undoes everything. So, uh, but I do now and then have a drink. I, on the weekends, mostly. So, I had a few people talk to say something to me about that, like uh, saying that I was wussing out or something, like that because the because the people were complaining about it. I wasn't getting hammered in the videos. I would have like a drink, a, a celebratory. A, 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 I would celebrate at the end of the videos and have a drink. What's, what's wrong with that? I'm entitled to that. I'm an adult. <laughs> yes, this is Coke. Calm down. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, it's Coke Zero, actually. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, should we read this one? Okay, yeah, let's, let's do this one. This one's from Jimmy Isaacs. Okay, hey John, can I start by saying I absolutely love your videos. Very informative and great to watch. I absolutely love your collection. I got into arcade gaming about two years ago when I built a vertical main cab, but since have sold sold it. I've now just finished an upright cab with a rotating monitor. That's crazy. You know, some of those candy cabs have rotating monitors, like the... 
think the Taito ones. Anyway, I I've seen some custom ones too with the vertical monitor. It's an actually an interesting concept because, you know, these arcade games are either horizontal uh, oriented monitors or vertical, you know, landscape or portrait. And the games were made to work on either landscape or portrait. And so if you only want one cabinet, that kind of creates a bit of a dilemma because it's like, uh, do you only play horizontal games or, or only vertical? You kind of have to make a choice. And some guys have made it so the monitor will rotate. Um, looks like he did. Don't worry, it, uh, by the way, don't worry, it was an old JAMA cabinet, so I'm not destroying a dedicated cabinet here, LOL. Um, I have got really into playing Berserk recently, but more importantly, Robotron. It's an absolute classic and gets your heart pumping and scares the heck out of me. And he actually said shit. I I'm actually starting to censor my swears here. <laughs> I got kids watching now. I, I gotta be careful. My question is, can you recommend the best micro switch joystick for this? As I've gotten the Sanwas at the moment and they don't seem right. Have you had much experience with micro switch joysticks? Cheers, Jimmy Isaacs in good old England. P.S. Keep up the great. All right, Jimmy, come on, dude. Jimmy, you want to play Robotron, and that's the game you really care about, and you're asking me which micro switch joystick to get? Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> Robotron is a leaf switch game. It uses leaf switch joysticks. All right, let, let's go over here. Let, let me show you what's going on, all right? So these are original Robotron Wicko brand joysticks, and these are not impossible to find, okay? And let me see if I can open the control panel. I'm actually prepared. I got a tape measure here. So these are the larger ball Wicko joysticks. They're eight-way joysticks, okay? Now, this is a wood control panel, okay? So the joysticks that are in here, what are they? Four and a half? Five inches? I think they're... I don't remember how... But anyway, it's not important. The, on a wood control panel, basically, at the end of the day, the joysticks need to sit about two and a half inches from the top, okay? They're, it's about two, yeah, two and a half inches, okay? Now, if you have a metal control panel, that means you're going to require a shorter Wicko stick because the control panel itself is not as thick. On a wood control panel, you're going to need a longer shaft joystick. And I think they come in three, three and a half, four. I don't remember, to be honest. Let me see if we can open this up and take a peek. Um, I don't remember what size Wicko's Robotron used. Was it four and a half? I don't know. I, I went through this with my Multi Williams, okay? Because my Multi Williams had a wood control panel. Okay, and, and by the way, let, let's talk about, let, let me show you guys what we're talking about. So, this is a leaf switch joystick, meaning these switches are leaf switches, and they're nothing more than two blades of metal, okay? It's just two blades of metal like this, and when you move the joystick, the joystick basically makes these pieces of metal touch each other. And that's all it is. That's how it makes contact. Now, a micro switch joystick has a mechanical switch. And when you push, when you move the joystick, a little thing comes down and hits the switch and it goes click, click, click. And it's very different. It has a completely different feel. To me, there's really no resistance with these leaf switches because the thing hits it and the, and the switches are so, the metal is so thin that the, the stuff just kind of flecks back and it, you never really stop dead on anything. On a micro switch, there is actually like a, it stops dead, okay? And so, these joysticks, I think these are, we can probably measure here. I think these are four. These are five. Yeah, they're five inches, aren't they? So on a on a metal control, on a wood control panel, you want a five inch Wicko. Is that right? Am I measuring this correct? Yeah, I think so. It's a five inch Wicko. If, I, if I'm wrong, we'll Google it. I'll, I'll Google it real quick. But it should be a five inch Wicko on a wood. And then on a metal control panel, you're going to go to like a four and a half around there because this yeah I, I think that's what it was i think i used four and a half inch on my metal control panel and i used and then robot because the, the metal control panel has less thickness of this so less of the joystick shaft is eaten up by the the thickness of this so we have more sticking out so on a metal control panel you want to get like a four inch joystick or four and a half and then on a wood control panel you want to get a five inch wicko yeah, you know, I'm gonna Google this real quick. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I'm not sure if I'm measuring that right. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. So these are actually these are considered four-inch Wicko's, and you actually are. I'm measuring it wrong. 
you don't measure to the end of the ball, you measure the actual shaft itself. Um, so it's four inches from the bottom of the ball to this end. So this is considered a four inch Wicko joystick. Now this is the size you want for a, a wood control panel. When I did my metal control panel, I used a three and a half inch Wicko joystick and it should be an eight way. Now these can be hard to find, okay? You're gonna have to look on eBay to buy original ones. Now there was reproduction joysticks. Uh, there are some reproduction Wicko style joysticks out there. Um, I think Paradise Arcade was selling them, so you could check there. But I personally, I would probably go the eBay route and patiently wait for a pair of these to come up on eBay. Um, and if you have a metal control panel, again, three and a half inch Wickos and a wood control panel, four inch. And I, I you know what, I can't recommend. I, I, I could not recommend a micro joystick for this. I, I don't know what would be good because um, playing with a clicky joystick doesn't seem right to, to me for Robotron at all because you need the fluidity of the of the leaf switches, okay? Because it's very, it, it almost feels like a 360 degree joystick. There's just no resistance. And with those switches, it's just like click, 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 you know, with the leaf switches, it's just, it's smooth. It's, it's just so smooth. So, um, so I hope I answered your question about that. You know, uh, like I said, I would try to get yourself a pair of three and a half or four inch Wickos. It all depends on uh, your control panel. Is it metal or wood? And I remember now uh, that I used three and a half inch on my uh, on my multi Williams because it had a metal control panel. And uh, where's the rest of his email? Uh, I guess we finished that one. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's read one more and get out of here. So uh, this is from Electric Gypsy, which is Eric. Uh, hey John, I'm in the den. <laughs> Um, I ordered your Journey Blue t-shirt, uh, thank you bro, and and I will wear it proudly uh, in South Louisiana. There are no basements, but I'm sure to get some great comments from wearing it around New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> from the one out of one million people that might understand why you're wearing that shirt. <laughs> Thanks for making these t-shirts happen, man. Well, well, by the way, Eric, thank you for ordering a t-shirt, bro. Any news on the possible Ben Heck collaboration video? I'm also looking forward to you visiting TNT Amusements and making the rounds of Todd Tucky when you get the opportunity. Your videos keep me coming back for more and I could do with two, or, two to three week per week as mentioned. You break up the content very well in such a way that there's no boredom, especially when you put out the longer videos. For me, it's production quality. Uh, and I look forward to it as I as it was televised as a major network. What's even better is that I know it's your own creation. One more thing, is there any way they can purchase a physical copy of your kill screen CD, case cover and disc? That would be sweet. Regards, Eric Lork. Alright, so let's talk about this. So uh, again, Eric, thank you, pal, for buying a t-shirt. It, it means a lot. Um, the Ben Heck thing. Okay, so I talked to Ben. Uh, via email in the last like three days okay that idea is still alive I I'm gonna tell you this and I can tell the guy's busy okay I, I know that he wants to do it and I we're trying to figure out the right idea he wants it to be part of his show he's gonna do whatever he does he's gonna do it on his show and then somehow it'll end up here in, in my basement okay so I'm working with him now that idea is still alive just give us some time um, I'll, I'll make sure it happens, okay? And I really want it to happen because I truly am a fan of Ben Heck. I mean, I am. I'm, I'm a Ben Heck fan. So I want, I'm want. i excited about it because I want to do this. So um, I talked to him. I, I, changed, I exchanged emails with him like on Friday. So stay tuned. All right, Todd, TNT Amusements. I called Todd on Friday, and he was expecting my call because you guys were bugging him. Not bugging, but just telling him that John, hey, do a video with John, do a video with John. So when I called Todd on Friday, I, I, I finally, I'm like, you know what? I just got to call the guy. Let's just get this over with. I was on lunch and I called him up and he's like, oh, I've been waiting for your call. I knew you were going to call eventually because everyone's been telling me to do a video. So thanks guys. So Todd and I are going to try to figure out a date. I don't know when it's going to be. I, I, it might be March. It might be April. I'm not sure if I can get down there in March. So it's gonna happen though, uh, let's just say by May, okay? I, it all depends on my schedule and my ability to get down there and also Todd's schedule as well. But we talked about it, Todd definitely wants to do it. He's very excited to buy it, I, I have to tell you. He's into it, he's into it a lot. He has all kinds of weird things he wants to do with singing and karaoke. 
So he's into it, big time, trust me, it's happening. <laughs> so it's just a function now of when I can get down there. And then at, in regards to the physical kill screen CD, okay, yes, you can order them. I only have, well, I thought I ran out of them, but Matt McCarthy had a box of them. So I had about uh, 50 or 40 left, okay? I just sent 10 of them to CD Baby, okay? And that was about, well, over a week ago. I sent them UPS ground though. So what you need to do, so the, the CDs are gonna s show up on Amazon or CD Baby, okay? You're, you're, you're probably better off going to CD Baby and getting, there is a, uh, a wait list, okay? So if you go to CDBaby.com and do a search for the kill screens, it'll say, the, the, the CD will come up, it'll say sold out, okay? And then it'll say, get on the waiting list. And you can sign up there. And then when they receive the inventory, you'll be one of the guys that gets one. And I sent them 10, okay? And I've got about, I think, 20 to 30 left. I suspect that those 10 are gonna sell it like that because I've had a lot of people asking me for them. So anyway, go to CD Baby, do the waiting list thing. As soon as they get them, they'll fill the orders. And then if they don't sell out, then they'll show up on Amazon. But they're going to go to CD Baby first because that's the, the warehouse that holds them. And then they supply Amazon with inventory. But if they get to CD Baby, sell out, they won't make it to Amazon. You, you get what I'm saying? So uh, so if you want them, CDBaby.com and uh, do a search for the kill screens and all that stuff. And of course, you can get the MP3 album, which I know is not as exciting. You can get that on Amazon and iTunes. Uh, the music's on Spotify. Just search for the kill screens. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, by the way, I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between. So if you wanna keep up with the videos you need to subscribe, go ahead and press that subscribe button. And then also check out my two podcasts, uh, Arcade Outsiders and Video Game Outsiders. That's videogameoutsiders.com and arcadeoutsiders.com. I do both of those podcasts live on Tuesdays starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on allgames.com or subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher and listen anytime you want. Just do a search for Video Game Outsiders or Arcade Outsiders anytime, anywhere you, you find CDs. I mean CDs, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anywhere you find podcasts. <laughs> And uh, again, thanks guys for supporting me with the t-shirt thing. Uh, go to teespring.com slash John's Arcade. That's T-E-E spring.com slash John's Arcade if you want to order t-shirts. The t-shirts, you can only order them in the next two weeks and then that's it. No more t-shirts. So teespring.com slash John's Arcade. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you next time. Actually, really soon. I, I want to do another video like around Wednesday. So I'm not going to wait, uh, wait a week in between videos like I did last week. So... I'll see you guys on Wednesday. So, all right, later and bye.